A five-year study to determine how chronic wasting disease impacts mule deer populations in areas of high disease prevalence may give wildlife managers answers as to whether the disease regulates mule deer populations and if long-term sustainability of those herds is possible. For the past three years, the University of Wyoming and Wyoming State Veterinary Laboratory, with funding from the U.S. Geological Survey's National Wildlife Disease Center, has trapped mule deer via helicopter net gunning in the South Converse mule deer herd in east central Wyoming, maintaining a sample size of 50 does and 10 bucks. Wyoming Game and Fish Department Casper Wildlife Management Coordinator Justin Binford helped initiate the study. Basically is what we're trying to do is estimate survival rates. What are the survival rates of individual deer in, an, in a herd with such a high prevalence of CWD? Anytime we have a mortality, we're looking at cause of death. For example, over the last couple of years, we've had several die of clinical CWD. We've had several mountain lion kills, a couple coyote kills, a couple road kills. Um, but we're, we're just trying to get a better understanding of, of how CWD actually impacts the dynamics of this population. The study is headed up by University of Wyoming graduate student Malia DeVivo with the guidance of Dr. Todd Cornish of the State Veterinary Laboratory. Biopsies of the deer's tonsils will be tested for chronic wasting disease. Blood samples determine pregnancy rates between does with the disease and without and provides genetic data to study whether some CWD deer may live longer with the disease than others. GPS radio collars show migration patterns and seasonal habitat selection. In 2011, the South Converse mule deer herd had a CWD prevalence rate of about 50 percent. Fawn productivity is typically lower in this herd compared to adjacent herds with similar habitat and other environmental variables. One theory is that CWD positive animals produce fewer offspring and raise fewer fawns than deer without the disease, something researchers want to look at. And then one of the other things we also want to understand is how this thing's affecting fawn recruitment, fawn survival. That's a major component. So, we're, um, you know, Malia, the grad student, she's going in looking at, at um, how many of these deer are having fawns left alive in November. Um, and right now, preliminary data is already showing that the CWD positive deer are having much poorer fawn recruitment uh, than the negative deer. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department is providing help in locating does and fawns during the summer and retrieving carcasses when deer die. They also would like to thank landowners in the Laparel Valley for making the study possible. Through this study, wildlife managers can better understand the additional impacts of CWD and its potential long-term impacts on free-ranging mule deer populations. This is Ray Hageman with the Wyoming Game and Fish Department.